You're watching Warps Behind the Animation. The software I used for this episode was Cinema 4D, After Effects with Trapcode Form, and Final Cut Pro 7. And the hardware that was used for this episode was this Xbox Kinect camera and my MacBook Pro. I first got interested in motion capture when I was attending Noman School of Visual Effects a couple years ago. Noman held a full day seminar that covered much of the workflow and the details that went into making Avatar, presented by the leads from Weta, ILM, and Stan Winston Studios. Then last summer at the YouTube Creator Institute at USC, I got to meet John Landau, the producer of Avatar, and I was able to ask him some more specific questions about motion capture. Soon after that, I went back to the USC motion capture room to speak with an animation student about his thoughts on motion capture and its future. Motion capture is the process of recording an actor and using the motion to drive an animated model on a computer. Right now we're in an optical motion capture room, meaning that cameras are used to record the actor and generate skeletons based off where the actor and various body parts are. The first known use of motion capture that I'm aware of was Able Image Research Lab, used for a commercial on the canned food industry in 1984. Computers did not automatically calculate the data being picked up. Humans had to do it, but the basic method is still the same. Motion capture is definitely going to get faster, cheaper, more accurate as time goes on. And I think within 10 years, you'll be able to get the accuracy of what we can get in this room in a setup someone made in their spare bedroom over a couple weekends. The Kinect camera is primarily a 3D depth camera consisting of three major parts. An infrared projector, which shines an infrared grid of dots on ranging objects in the direction that the Kinect faces. An RGB camera, similar to an SD web camera, which captures a video image in tandem with the IR image. And an infrared camera that detects the grid array being generated from the infrared projector. So it can interpret the depth of the objects in front of the Kinect. Producing what is known as a depth map, detecting where objects are in 3D space. Less than two years ago, a few savvy people around the world, such as John Benz from Machinima, found that you can record motion data from the Kinect camera and apply that data to a 3D model through Motion Builder and 3D programs such as Maya or 3D Studio Max. That inspired me to research what could be done through After Effects because the render time is a lot faster working with 2D rigs rather than working with 3D models, especially since I'm working as a one-man animation team from a laptop computer. Thanks to a tutorial and software called Connectopin, just recently developed by animator Nick Fox Geek, and a lot of consulting and workflow development planning with animator Victoria Nice, I began to put together a mobile motion capture setup that records motion data through the Kinect camera and can be applied directly to puppets created in Photoshop. While researching the motion capture workflow, I also built a basic nonlinear story outline for the series. I had to look down several episodes and build a chart with variable connecting concepts from the past, present, future, and parallel dimensions, and how they would relate to each other as the series would progress. And after the basic outline was done, I could start with the first script. Then after that, the next step was to break down the scenes and begin building all the backgrounds for the first episode pre-visualizing what I was going to do in each shot and creating a background from the angle that was needed for each shot. I created all the 2D backgrounds in hand by Photoshop using multiple layers and I purchased 3D models from TurboSquid for the backgrounds of the 3D set and modified them by eliminating or adding objects from the base models. Then lighting, rendering them out and then I could work with them in After Effects to do animation much faster in a 2D program. I searched everywhere for a photo of Area 51, but unfortunately no civilian could get even in distance to see that military base. The closest thing available to us right now is an extreme zoom in on Google Earth. However, I did find a wide shot of a very detailed Area 51 CG model created by Roman Kessler of CGI Doe and produced by composer Arnold Beeman. They worked out a deal with me where I could use a wide shot for this animation project. You can check out their links in the description below. I wanted to have 3D objects wherever I could in this project without spending too much rendering time, so I did render out 3D motions of objects that would be held by animated characters any place I could without taking too much from everything else I was doing at the same time. And the time machine effect was a combination of layers, between the full res model in C4D, a trap code version that would be overlaid as particles that would bend and warp apart as the time machine ramps up, a diffuse glow pass of the rendered model, 
and a displacement map ripple effect to the background layer to enhance the end of the sequence as the time machine vanishes. As for the characters, I took still photos of the actors from different angles with different expressions. Then would assemble them in Photoshop in multiple layers and rig them with control points and after effects. With Mystery Guitar Man, I had a lot of angles and expressions to work with since I helped him with his animation band video a few months ago. I just found a few still frames from the reference footage that I had and wrote them out from the background. This is also the stage where I got their voiceover recordings as well. Once all the digital puppets were assembled and rigged and the backgrounds were ready, I made storyboards based on the script so I knew what angles and actions were happening on each take. Then I could work with Justin, the main actor on this series, to do all the motions that were going to be made for each character in the episode. That data was recorded via connect to pin and saved to TXT files, where I copied each action and then pasted the data directly into the source layer of After Effects. After the motion data was applied, I made several animation tweaks and synced the audio with the mouth and facial expression. Once that was all set, I still needed several objects that were key to the scene, such as the net and the yarn balls that were being thrown. I actually recorded those as live elements on green screen and composited them into the scene. And after that, the final step was the music. While searching for music references on YouTube, I found Andrew Chelman's channel. He had a very wide range of music samples from classical to dubstep and I thought he would be great to work with on this project. He did all the music for this episode and he even did the very cool time warping sound effect. If you're into different compositions with a wide array of music programs, demos, and tutorials, I definitely recommend checking out his channel. And that's pretty much it for the first episode. I got a lot more coming and hope to keep pushing things further. Let me know if you have any questions about this process and I can cover in future behind the scenes videos. Thanks again to Mystery Guitar Man. Visit Nick and Victoria's channels to learn more details on motion capture and animation. Also check out Andrew's channel to hear more of his music tracks. Also thank you to everyone on YouTube that gave me permission to use part of their videos for this Kinect explanation. I listed all their links in the description below. Also be sure to check out my green screen challenge and of course the first episode of Warp. Thanks for watching.